Thanks for staying with us now. If you're just tuning in, today is going to be a great day. Now, so we say if the International Bill of Rights lists 10 basic human rights to include the rights to um, equal, equality and freedom from discrimination, the right to life, liberty and personal security, freedom from torture and degrading treatment, the right to equality before the law, the right to a fair trial and the right to privacy, freedom of belief and religion and freedom of opinion. Now, clearly tells me um, that we are far from international standards as far as human rights are concerned. Now, 2020 saw the youth in Nigeria express strongly their opinions on the state of our nation, backed with a protest that was poorly handled by the government, which further exposed the failure of our leadership in Nigeria. So as we attempt to discuss our rights as a people, with all the challenges we are facing as a nation, from insecurity to poor governance to lack of quality education to poor health care and infrastructure, now this list is endless, what is the hope for the birth of a new Nigeria? And how can the youth be a part of this change with a constant show of impunity from those in leadership positions? Now, let us hear what you have to say. Remember, you can join this conversation. Tweet at us at WayShowAfrica1 with the hashtag WayShow. Or you send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 803 right, so I'm going to come to Uti to help us do a, what's it called? <laughs> a foundational layer. Because um, I remember when I called you this morning, I was just really tired, you know, mm. because first of all, these are conversations that we have in different styles. We've yeah. had it in, you know, whether we are ready as young people or are we doing it the right way? Is this the right strategy we're using? Mm. But you know what? When we have a great uh, person, you know, like the guest that we're having today, we cannot help but continue to keep the, that Absolutely. conversation on the right. front burner. So when you hear rights and impunity versus impunity, what comes to your mind? So for me, um, it, it first of all speaks to our rights as citizens. I mean, you've just reeled out a long list of rights. And even I myself had to today go and say, you know, what, is, what are the rights of a Nigerian citizen? Because in Nigeria, life happens to you. Mm -hmm. You don't have time to remember, to check what your rights are. Because somewhere in the back of your mind, you, it's either you don't feel that you have rights or you know that you'll be challenged anyway. And when you attempt to express those rights, somehow there's going to be pushback. So for me, it was that element of what are my rights as a citizen? Now, is the government upholding my right as a citizen, as a human being? Mm -hmm. I mean, we know that by all metrics and skills, Nigeria doesn't do very well uh, along human rights. Um, but when I bring it home to Nigeria and say, you know, what does my constitution say are my rights? And, you know, you've read them all out. And I say, how much of this personal liberty, how much of these things do I, can I freely express? Ah, the one I read out is the international standard. Yeah, and yeah, if you so follow that, it means that we are no, very no, far no, away. No, the international standards. When I even talk about for Nigeria, so mm -hmm. the idea of, you know, right to life, right to personal liberty, right to religion, education. Yeah. So, you know, those, those things that are specifically listed in the constitution. So when I think about those things and I say, okay. So now if I beat my hand on my chest and say, you know, Uti, the constitution says these are your rights. You can't stand up and tell anybody that try me. Mm. You'll be shocked in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. The level of impunity, the level of who the hell are you? Excuse me. Mm -hmm. That is what we face every, every day. single day. And it is at every level of power. So this mm. is not even to say that it is purely our political leaders. Try and go and get something done in local government. Mm -hmm. You know that everywhere your rights have been abused. Mm -hmm. So we've almost been conditioned in this country to not know our rights. So as such, not care to stand up for our and rights. So we don't even know what to ask. Yes. For. Then when you appear to be standing up for your rights, then you're a rebel, mm -hmm. you're a problem, you're a troublemaker. Whatever you want to tag the person is what you become. Mm. So when you then see a collective, like what we saw last year. Yeah, with the protests. People standing up for their rights and saying, you know what, this is my right. I'm a Nigerian too. Then you see the full force of impunity in large mm. and in living color. Absolutely. Let me come to Tammy quickly before I bring in our guest. Tammy, are you there? Uh, Tammy, yes, can... I am. All right. I, I think what you have said a lot. Uh, she has said a lot, particularly when she referred to the Constitution. I really like the angle that she brought it from, the rights that we have on paper. She even went ahead to mention 
some of them, that was just great. You know, we have a lot of rights when we, you know, look at the constitution. I think it's important for people to know their rights. It's very important, right? Right to life, right to personal liberty, right to dignity of human rights, and the rest of the other rights are enshrined in, you know, section four of the constitution. I think the um, discussion and what I really be like, I would really like to hear from our guests today is um, the way forward. You know, we, we have this right on paper, and then we've seen cases where we people who try to enforce their rights and even go as far as actually you know, going to the judiciary to enforce the rights, and we find that again the government in certain cases flouts these orders, even the orders of the court. Mm -hmm. So um, at this point, I think I'd really like to hear the thoughts of, of our guest. The, um, the guest, the oh. lawyer, yes, who is a lawyer. And really, I know that he's, um, he's, um, he's, how do I describe him now? He has a lot of thoughts and a lot of things that I would he's like to He's the number one reason. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let me bring in our guest. <laughs> Dele Parotimi right. is a lawyer author and member of the Citizens Rally Against Oppression. Now, he serves as, he served as president of the Student Union at La Lagos State University, that's Lasso, in 1994-95, and was called, the called to the Nigerian Bar Association in 1999. He, he established Dele Farutimi and Co. in 20, uh, 2002, a full-service law firm which is now known as DF Legal. He remained in active legal practice until his retirement in 2018 at the age of 50. He's a political commentator and author of the book, Do Not die in their war. Dele Farotimi is passionate about the birth of a new Nigeria and a better Nigeria. And he's joined us via Zoom. Thank you so much for joining us, Dele Farotimi. It's been an absolute pleasure <laughs> to be listening to you and to even be on your platform. Thanks for inviting me. Oh, thank, thank you, you so much. Yay. I know, right? <laughs> All right, so you heard our banter on the conversation. Like, it is actually tiring. Oh, yes, I did. <laughs> It is actually tiring because this is something that we face every day. But I think 2020 for me birth it, it birthed something. A new mindset. A new fire in every mm. young person. And I think that for us, the reason we're keeping these conversations going is to keep the fire burning mm. so it doesn't go cold. Like what we always see that happens with things like this in Nigeria. But your general assessment and overview of what our rights is versus the impunity that we see you know, in the nation today, what would you say that is? First thing first, let me first of all say, thank you very much, for one, for building this platform, thank two, you. for the amount of intelligence I have had ventilated on your program tonight, Thank you very much for what you have done. You. Now, you're asking for an overview. I've had the pleasure of listening to you all. But I have this new ministry I took on in recent time, and I'm borrowing my friend, Taiwa Akinla, Miss phrase. I call it the Ministry of Clarity. Mm. And what I intend to do is to attempt to bring clarity to the discussions you've had tonight, because a lot has been said. Now, before I managed to graduate the university with a degree in law, I spent some time on excursion, reading English language and linguistics as a cause of study. And it has left me with a lifelong predilection. And what it does is that I am fixated on the meaning of words. They are real meanings, not the meanings within the context of Nigeria. Mm. So when you use words like citizens, when you use words like human rights, when I hear words like my phrases like my constitution, mm. what I will do is let me help you break some of these things down. The Nigerian is not a citizen in the true sense of the word citizen. Mm. For you to be a citizen, because citizenship is a graduation from being a subject, a search, the earliest form of human society where you had kings and feudal lords. It evolved, the Bill of Rights came about the Magna Carta, that formed the basis of citizenship, where the king became subjected to the law. And then you began to speak in terms of the equality of citizenship. Mm -hmm. You began to speak in terms of human rights. Mm -hmm. You began to speak in terms of the inalienable rights. It then meant that even the person who works for the king, as well as the king, is subject to the law. So the law is ruling. For you to have citizenship, the law must rule. 
the law must be the primary force in your society. Mm. Now, if the primary legislation founding the Nigerian state, the Nigerian constitution, is a product of fraud, mm. manifest fraud, the 1999 constitution is not a reflection of any one of our wills. It is the reflection of the will of a band of military bandits, crooks, men who have only distinguished themselves by the capacity to kill and to plunder. They were the ones who sat down and bequeathed what you now call my constitution. Do you understand? Yes. The policeman who is enforcing that constitution knows that it is not your constitution. He knows that it is the constitution enforcing the will of those who hold power hmm. in Nigeria. So the local government chairman can decree the law. Yes, you can run to your court where the judges selected by the men who are exercising the unconscionable powers you have in the constitution that says we the people, but lies with his very first line because the people were never involved. Mm -hmm. So when we talk in terms of citizenship, there is a presumption that the law rules. The law does not rule in Nigeria. It is the will of men that rule. If you were ever in doubt, since you're so passionate about the NSAS episode, let me take you back to it. The minute the federal government said we were renaming SARS and we're going to call it SWAT, mm -hmm. and the people involved in the protest, understanding that this was merely a change of nomenclature or that would have changed not the essence of the organization itself, the moment they refused, the battle line was drawn. The Nigerian state was never going to be able to submit itself to the law, which is what would have happened if you handed the impunity of SARS. Hmm. So the moment the state knew that it could not end SARS, it was always going to have to respond with murderous force. Hmm. There were other factors that led to that becoming the end game. But you cannot end SARS in Nigeria without entering the system of injustice that undergirds the totality of the Nigerian state. So when you speak in terms of, when you were talking about the World Wildlife Foundation Declaration of the, you, I think World Animal Rights Day or whatever yeah, that the was, I was laughing was. to myself. Yeah, the reality is that, you know, some people speak glibly of Nigeria being a zoo. I look at them and I laugh. The only place you could find a zoo that will parallel the Nigerian state would be within Nigeria itself. Nowhere else in the civilized world would anyone treat animals as badly as Nigerians are treated. Mm -hmm. And it's certainly not a jungle because there is no jungle that is anywhere near as dysfunctional as the country in which we live. Mm -hmm. So to, now I've painted what might seem to a lot of people like a rather depressing picture. But let me beam the light so that you would all know that there is a lot to be hopeful about. My generation grew up on hope, and we were restrained by hope. But all those hopes were illusory. They were lies. They lied to us. Your generation watched us being lied to. And that is why you are refusing to keep quiet, because the only way you can have anything near a normal life if you keep quiet, if you found the grace to keep quiet, you would have to escape. It's no longer my grace. You would have to escape mm. to find normal state. So the battle line was indeed drawn in October. The Nigerian state is making clear that the Nigerian might be a global citizen, but it's not a citizen in Nigeria. So if you truly want anything to change, the demand of the Nigerian youth should be for citizenship. The best thing Nigeria is offering any one of you is indigenship, hmm. not citizenship. Hmm. And in the, in, the, in the cauldron of indigenship, it divides you. So you have the educationally disadvantaged indigenous. You have the educationally advantaged indigenous. citizen, which then means that he has become disadvantaged and handicapped because he's advantaged by the Nigerian constitution. Hmm. So if you really want change, stop focusing on all this story about they want to uh, election in 2023, people should go and register. No, focus on a demand for citizenship. citizenship. Mm. 
because the reality. Oh, so old. Yeah. Oh my God! Did it freeze? God, Uti, I I'm like so I'm much. speechless. <laughs> you know when in your head you kind of know this is what I would like to ask him, mm. and then he said all of that, and I'm like, right. <laughs> um. Okay. <laughs> what, are we supposed to what are we talking about next? Yeah. Because, I mean, this is what I love about being on Waze, right? You learn so much. And the, the concept, and it's one of the challenges we just talked about, you know, the power of institutions. Mm -hmm. When people, uh, or rather, when the law is not above everyone, mm -hmm. that what he has raised is so fundamental to even now bringing me back to what I guess would be my question that says, so many people have called for the constitution to be reviewed, reviewed rewritten, torn up. Mm -hmm. So now that, you know, we're even saying that right now, the constitution as it is doesn't even bestow us citizenship. How do we start that journey hmm. to saying, okay, Nigeria, bestow upon me citizenship? Mm. Do we, if I have written the constitution and, and what, he has explained, also sort of gives a bit of, shines a bit of a spotlight as to why the, the conversation around the constitution goes nowhere. Mm. Because if I've written it to benefit me, you think I'm no gonna matter how it? much you cry, am I going to, do you get what <laughs> I, I mean? I won't change it. Because every single person you speak to says, mm -hmm. this constitution isn't working for anybody. And yet we're still stuck we're with still that same constitution. Okay, here is so, back, but you know what? Let me quickly... Um, you had a question, yes. uh, so let's, let, let's take that question then. Um, we'll, we'll take a break, like in two minutes. Go ahead. Yeah, so I mean, I'll just I'll, um, ask the question again. So, you know, how do we start this process of being bestowed with citizenship? Mm -hmm. We all agree that the Constitution doesn't work for us, but you've also pointed out the fact that the Constitution works for maybe a collective of few, so how do we get this thing moving? Because it was all over the place last year, and then it seems to have just died out. Mm -hmm. Where do we begin? Well, um, I would say to you that we didn't begin anything last year, if the truth be told. There wasn't clarity about what was required. Mm -hmm. People assumed that it was about a renegade rogue police unit. Mm. You, you see, you can stand in... I've used this analogy several times. You stand in front of a tree and you're complaining about the fruits. You should be focused on the tree. The focus should be on the tree of impunity that battered SARS. Something battered SARS. If you were citizen, there will be no SARS in the first place. Mm -hmm. Because SARS, it will mean that the policeman is submitted to the law and he has a duty to uphold your rights as citizens. Mm -hmm. But in a situation where you are not citizens have been issued, hmm. it becomes almost impossible for you to argue about... So you just shattered me. Well, okay, so you, you know answer, what? Call this one. <laughs> Tell if I wrote to me, you know what? We'll, we'll take a break. I'll bring it to me when we come back from the break. But you know what? You just shattered me. What you've told me now is that I'm just an indigi. Yep. I'm not even a... So I should not even be calling myself you don't a citizen. Have mouth. I don't have mouth to talk. That's what you have just said to me. But we're going to take a very Man. short break. When we return, I'll take Temi's uh, question. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> 